Hello, I'm David Kerr and you're watching Shalom World News. Here's your latest news headlines from around the globe. Christians are under attack across the globe because Christianity stands in the way of those who wish to reconstruct society according to their own ideology. That's the opinion of the president of the civil rights advocacy group, the Catholic League. Bill Donoghue made his comment in response to last week's annual report by the US Commission on Unalienable Rights. That's a committee created last year by the US State Department to monitor human rights as understood by the founding principles of the United States and the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The Commission's report concluded that fundamental human rights are dependent on property rights and religious liberty. Bill Donahue suggested that both these things are presently under attack in the United States, where in recent weeks churches have been burned and Catholic statues vandalised. He highlighted the case of anarchist and satanic symbols being daubed in the door of St. Joseph's Church in New Haven, Connecticut. Such vandalism, asserted Mr. Donahue, was not the work of drunken teenagers. Instead, they are, quote, a reflection of the hate-filled environment that marks the United States at the current time. Across the world, he concluded, it is Christianity which poses the biggest obstacle for those who wish to reconstruct society, whether they be communists in China, Islamists in the Middle East, or anarchists in the USA. Crucifixes and images of Jesus Christ are being torn down all across communist China and replaced with portraits of the country's President Xi Jinping or its founder Chairman Mao. That's the claim of the online journal Bitter Winter, which specialises in reporting upon religious liberty and human rights in China. They say that the regional government in the northern province of Shanxi has ordered its officials to remove crucifixes, religious symbols and other such images from the homes of people who receive social welfare payments. The penalty for non-compliance, it reports, is the withdrawal of that welfare. Bitter Winter also reports upon the case of a disabled Christian man who was barred from receiving a minimum living subsidy and a monthly disability allowance. His family were also warned to stop attending Christian services or face being treated as anti-communist elements. Similar stories have been reported from several other Chinese provinces. The Commission of European Bishops has called upon the European Union to adopt, quote, a human-centric approach to artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is intelligence displayed by machines, including computers. The Commission, which represents the Episcopal Conferences of Member States of the European Union, or EU, made their comments as part of a response to a recently published EU white paper on the issue of artificial intelligence. The bishops give a general welcome to the approach of the EU, which they say aims to protect both human dignity and personal privacy. They point out, though, that while artificial intelligence may be driven by such things as data or algorithms, it is important that humans determine the programme and goals of artificial intelligence in order to uphold the dignity of the human person and the common good of human society. Catholic bishops across the United States are marking a day of mourning on Friday, July the 24th, as the Byzantine Basilica of Hagia Sophia in Turkey is officially reopened as a mosque. The day of mourning was initiated by the Greek Orthodox Church in the United States. They have invited all Christians and people of goodwill to join them in the day of prayer. They've also asked that parish churches and other Christian communities ring their church bells, lower their flags to half-mast and chant the Orthodox Akathist hymn in honour of Our Lady or pray the Holy Rosary in order to ask for the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hagia Sophia was built in the 6th century during the reign of the Emperor Justinian. In the 15th century, the invading Ottomans turned it into a mosque. Finally, in 1934, under a secularist Turkish government, the mosque was converted to a museum. Earlier this month, though, a Turkish court ruled that the historic building can now be turned back into a mosque. Hagia Sophia is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. An evangelical television station, which broadcasts into Iran, is claiming that thousands of Iranians have converted to Christianity since the beginning of the COVID-19 lockdown across the Middle Eastern country. The claim comes from Mike Ansari, who is the Director of Operations for Mohabbat TV. They broadcast across the officially Muslim country in Iran's official language of Farsi. Mr Ansari told the Christian Broadcasting Network that with most Iranians forced to stay at home due to COVID-19 restrictions, many citizens who are unhappy with the country's Muslim regime have been searching the internet to find alternatives to Islamic rule. This includes discovering more about Christianity, 
And this has resulted, he says, in around 3,000 conversions a month to Christianity in Iran since March, including many people making dangerous journeys to get baptised. For this reason, said Mr Ansari, he was calling the COVID-19 pandemic the pandemic of hope. Iran has been under theocratic Islamic rule since the Iranian Revolution of 1979. Finally, Pope Francis has made a surprise visit to a summer camp for the children of Vatican employees. On Monday morning, the Holy Father popped into the Estati Ragazzi, or summer kids camp, just in time for breakfast at the Paul VI audience hall. Pope Francis then went from table to table. He encouraged the children to make new friends. He then visited the children's play areas set up inside the hall. He also met the organisers and staff managing the camp and expressed his gratitude for their work. Sponsored by the Vatican, the camp is taking place in the Vatican Gardens, the Vatican Heliport and the Paul VI Audience Hall. Organised for children of Vatican employees between the ages of 5 and 14, the camp is being attended by over 100 children. Each day consists of sports, games, learning and prayer. Wonderful stuff. Well, that's all for now. Do join me next time for some more news from around the globe. Until then, may God bless you. Shalom.